Hi there, this is Olaf Merck from Amaranth and you're watching Kalesign TV. Hi there, you're watching Kalesign and we are in Chonsmith Rock Frozen in Jyväskylä, Finland. Today our guest is Olaf Merck from the band Amaranth. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, great to have you. Uh, how are you? I'm uh, really good. It's uh, amazing to be back in Finland. Uh, we um, not very long ago came home from a tour in the US mm. together with uh, Dragon Force. The weather was obviously quite different, but <laughs> I have to say that it's really, really nice to be back in uh, the north. A few days at home, then I go over here, um, Finland, everything is perfectly organized. Mm. We have some very enthusiastic fans here, thank you. So, uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to be back. Yeah. Uh, you have a new album, Catalyst, coming out in February. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have a few singles out now. How uh, have they been received? Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing so far, like in the terms of uh, pure numbers, like the videos have been streaming amazing and really good on Spotify and everything. So thank you for listening. But uh, I, I think people have been, uh, they've been a little bit surprised that we uh, we did something different and we've been going back and forth a little bit. So we've been playing with people's expectations, okay. which is always fun to do. For example, uh, first single from uh, the Catalyst album was a song called uh, Damnation Flame. And uh, it's really the first time that the band does in something full on orchestral and we had this vampire theme that we were playing uh, around with. So uh, it was a little bit funny to see, you know, how people interpret it. Like some people thought, OK, is this going to be the new concept for the album or is this just a one off? But then um, second single, Insatiable, was um, a little bit more, how should I say, back to the roots, uh, Amaranth kind of full-on party uh, track which actually we will be premiering this song live right here in Uvascula tonight first time ever oh, actually nice. if everything goes right <laughs> oh, uh, so that's cool okay that, that's cool oh and uh, uh, yeah and we released a single just a couple of weeks ago uh, called uh, Outer Dimensions which has been re received fantastically also a little bit of a different almost slightly melancholic song oh, for oh. being amaranth so I think it's a really good uh, lineup sing of singles so far, and of course we have a couple of more coming out before the album. So oh, there's some okay. uh, there's some special stuff coming your way. Nice. So it can't be very long until the next one, because if the it album cannot be very long, because everyone knows that the album is out on February 23rd. Yeah, so yeah. Um, people should keep their eyes peeled on our YouTube channel and Facebook right. and all that stuff. Amazing. Uh, at least Damnation Flame is already on the set list. You've been playing it. How do you like it playing it live? I mean, it's <laughs> it's like when it's your new single and you ask a question like that, you're going to say that it's fantastic, but it really, really, really is. <laughs> I was talking to Elise about it on the way here yesterday, and it's such a phenomenal song to play live. Mm. It has a little bit of a, like I said before, different theme. Mm. So it's really e easy to get into the, the concept and the, like the story of the song. Mm. And just musically, it's, it's a song that just really works well live, which is the case. It's not always the case for every song because something that works in the studio might not translate as well. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, the band plays it well, sometimes it doesn't come across exactly how you, uh, mm. you know, expect it to. Mm. But uh, but this song has been phenomenal live for okay. sure. Can't wait. Uh, your first singles are really quite uh, bangers, if I'd say. Uh, Thank you. How do you manage to make such, you know, catchy? songs year after year where where is your inspiration coming from i mean it's it's all kinds of stuff uh, me and elise have been writing music together for a long time now so it's it's more about deselecting what what doesn't go on the album that rather than being inspired of what goes on the album because i mean elise is such a phenomenal composer she has so many ideas and uh, for me i i have never had a writer's block either and we just really like to write music it's also something that you tend to do, uh, you know, after you've been out touring for one and a half, two years. Mm. So we don't really work with composition full time. So once we come back, we're just like attacking it yeah. like hungry wolves. <laughs> okay. That's amazing. Uh, do you have any favorites or personally important songs on the album? Oh, I do. I do. I think um, there's a bunch of them. Like, like I said, Damnation Flame was a really cool big song to make because um, uh, I'm, I'm working a lot with orchestration and stuff like that and I studied it for a long time and it was cool to let that, those influences loose. I would say the title track is, is one of the 
my favorite songs that we've ever written, like super big chorus and everything. You guys will hear it soon in February, but um, yeah, I'm super happy about that. We also have a song called Revision. I think you heard as well. It's also a little bit something a little bit different for Amaranth, so it's also my one of my favorites. Okay. Nice. It's funny to talk about favorite songs when people haven't heard them. <laughs> yeah, but you're gonna have to check the interview again when the album is out, so exactly. you can, you know. <laughs> um, how long have you been working on this album? Because uh, Manifest came out like a few years ago, and uh, you also had some changes on your lineup, you know, on the way. So how long have you been working on this? I think um, the first concepts were probably done in early 2021 because obviously there was uh, the whole uh, COVID, mm. you know, pause for everything. Usually we wait longer than that before we start to write anything. And I think it was still another six months before me and Elise went into more like heavy songwriting mode. But at that point, Elise had recorded like six million ideas on her phone and I had a bunch of ideas, you know, on my computer. Yeah. So uh, I think from maybe August of 2022, that's when we kicked into uh, higher gear, so to speak. Yeah. And then we had a really intense writing session for like five, six months and then it was done. Okay. Uh, did you have some material from the previous albums or did you make like completely new stuff? Any leftover ideas or anything? Do you tend to do that or do you always start anew? Oh. We always start anew, interestingly enough, because we have thought this sometimes like, okay, now these things didn't fit the album, mm. but maybe we should save it for later because it's such great, great stuff. Mm. But then you grow as a composer and you know, you go out on the road, you get different impressions and you grow as a human being, hopefully. Mm. So, uh, so you kind of attack it from a different <coughs> angle. And those things that you wrote two, three years ago uh, doesn't sound as fresh to yourself anymore. Ooh. So you always leave it behind. Leave everything behind. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever think about that? It, it was a good idea. We should have maybe used that or anything. Or is it, is it easy to just attack on a new album and start making new stuff? I mean, it's usually just no regrets. We usually don't look back. I mean, we've joked around it, uh, with it a couple of times. Mm. There are some stuff that never went on the first album, for example, because we were kind of like trying to find our sound. And mm. those are actually some, it's a couple of pretty cool songs, you know, from back in. 2009 mm. around the same time that we wrote uh, you know hunger and amaranthine and it has a little bit of that a little bit of that vibe let's see maybe you know one of these days we we take some stuff that is like really old just because it represents something mm. old and then yeah. we do a new interpretation of it maybe yeah. Yeah. i haven't really considered it but now that you mention it <laughs> Ooh, some new ideas you know from the interview yeah, exactly uh, how was the process of making this album does does the process, you know, change over the years for you? Anyhow, how was making this? It was um, it was fairly straightforward. Uh, as I said, it's it's usually me and Elise sitting down with the uh, you know oh. ideas that we've had uh, separately, and a lot of the times we just sit down with a you know blank page and oh. just come up with something as well you know from scratch. Oh. So um, I won't say that the the method has dramatically really changed in any, any way. I think what changed is that um, we probably had a lot more time to do concepts, time to think about, you know, what could we do new, what we could we do different and, you know, to step outside the box a little bit. So, um, so we had a lot of fun, uh, you know, trying out some more crazy stuff. Some of the most crazy stuff didn't end up on the album because it probably shouldn't. Have. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I would say on average, uh, we just had uh, less limitations on ourselves okay. this time around, okay. I would say. Do you see that it's like something that will continue? Uh, you you will maybe do something different next time, like on the next albums that you might try more and more new stuff? I mean, that's absolutely possible. I think that as an artist, you're constantly mm. like developing. Mm. And even when you do stuff that is sometimes you do stuff that is like consciously a little bit of a reference to something that you did in the past. But since we have changed so much as individuals and, you know, we've been touring and playing music now for 12, 13, 14 years, yeah. then it's always going to, going to have a different flavor to it, basically. Mm. But uh, I mean, we're always up for trying new things. So mm. so I think the definitive answer to that is it's very likely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, on the album, there's also one cover. Yep. I don't know if you want to talk about the name of it yet, but uh, how did you end up choosing this one? Is there anything you can tell about it? Yeah, 
Is that even official? I think it is. So let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, so um, one of my favorite uh, Swedish bands from uh, you know when I was a kid. My um, I think my sister or my mom bought like a cassette with Roxette, mm -hmm. and there, there's uh, there's this song called "Fading Like a Flower" that um, immediately caught my attention when I was you know this big, oh. and uh, and I think already you know very many years ago there was an idea like this could make a great metal song because. Um, it has a lot of the contrast that we usually, uh, you know, deal with uh, in Amaranth. It has a little bit of a sad verse, a little bit down tempo, and then the chorus kicks in and it's a little bit more happy. So um, I don't know exactly why it happened now of all times, but it just, I think we had some spare time and we figured that if we're gonna do it, maybe now is the time to do it. And it, I think we arranged it in a, in a day or two because all we kind of needed to do was to arrange it in an Amaranth style and it turned into an Amaranth song. Yeah. I think for the people who don't know Roxette, like the people in the US might not always be aware of it. And when we played it to people there, Ooh. they're just convinced that, okay, but this is an Amaranth song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it actually sounds very much like Amaranth, so. Yeah, good. I think that it's was the uh, idea. success. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's a nice version. Listen to it. Uh, <sighs> Has the feeling of making music and releasing new albums, you know, changed over the years? You've done it for so many years, so does it develop? Yeah, I mean, I guess it does. I think you have different expectations and I think you approach a release mm. differently. I think we're probably much more relaxed and confident about what we're releasing mm. these days. I think, you know, uh, back in the uh, days of the first couple of albums, we were kind of riding upon the songs becoming hits, mm. you know, so we could continue, uh, you know, with this newly started band. And, uh, you know, when because we had quite a bit of success with the first album. Mm. And when we had that initial success, it can maybe sometimes easily go the other way. Mm. So you g gain some momentum and then you kind of lose it. And, uh, and that would have been terrible, of course. I think these days we have established ourselves well. I mean, both on streaming album sales and, you know, playing live and all these things. But you always want the best for your little newborn song babies, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So you always uh, have the highest of hopes. And I would say there's always some kind of surprise how people react to it. Because yeah. when you put it out there, people, they hear it from the outside. Uh, unlike yourself, who has been part of the creative process from the beginning. So for me, it's always very exciting, even if... Um, couple of times where response was maybe not negative but maybe not maybe less positive you know a bunch of years ago when we tried some crazy stuff then uh, it's really really exciting to see how people approach it even if it's uh, not 100% positive but yeah reception for the new singles has been great so yeah so, so we're very happy yeah tell something uh, many bands have always like goals or something where they are going to with their albums especially like bands that are starting their career and trying to go abroad and stuff do you have any like goals with this album do you have, could you say where you're trying to go with this one yeah i mean it's on multiple levels like on the one hand uh, obviously it's always you want to take things to the next level mm. and um, one way of doing that is obviously to release bigger better music you know and have success with that and all that and it's not really about you know fame fortune that kind of thing it's about um, the more the better things go the more creative tools mm. you also get you can make cooler videos mm. you can uh, build um, cooler uh, live shows like once we go out on tour with the Catalyst album, because this is actually, you know, today and tomorrow are the two last shows that we're doing on the Manifest tour. Oh, yeah. Officially, actually. So once we kick off uh, next year, there will be a new stage production Ooh. and a new way to approach this, because now we we have we're fortunate enough to be able to do something Ooh. more with it. So so um, so all the way back to what you were saying, like the goal is always to build things better, higher, Ooh. cooler. Ooh. To entertain an audience to entertain ourselves but uh, i think at the end of the day most of all you're also writing music as an uh, introspective thing and as mm. a creative thing mm. so that that goal that you're setting for yourself is to surpass what you've done before yeah. creatively so that you feel like you're going in the right direction and mm. you're you're not only standing still in the mm. in the same location yeah. so to speak yeah the possibilities grow with the band I exactly bet, because, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah exactly uh, your band is renewing. Mikael Selin joined the band earlier this mm -hmm. year. Uh, how's it 
been? How's the dynamic of the band so far? Yeah, the cool thing is that we knew him uh, quite well before. Mm. He's in a band called Engel also, and we toured with them back in 2014. So uh, the cool thing that was that we had already shared a bus once before, but it had a, had been many years, and I maybe only met him once, you know, in yeah. nine years, yeah. <laughs> which is a long time. Yeah. But uh, so uh, the thing is that he, I mean, he's from the um, same country, and he's from the same mm. city as uh, Nils lives in oh. now. And uh, we're of similar age and you know similar backgrounds and everything, so it's it's a very easy dynamic to to, to fall into, if you know what I mean. So it feels like he's been uh, around for a much longer time. Yeah. Obviously, he did his first show with the band in uh, June mm. in Spain, so naturally it's not been more than five months, and it feels like a lot longer mm. than that. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been working out really, really, really well. Okay, that's great to hear. Uh, so next year is looking pretty good for you. Album is going out and gigs are coming and you will return to Finland Indeed. more than once. Yes. Actually. So what's February one time and in the summer? Exactly. So we have uh, we're playing at um, Helsingi Jehali yeah. in uh, February. I don't remember the date right now, but it's I think it's right at the end of February. Yeah. Could be the 1st of March also. But yeah, something, actually, some, yeah, I think some, it might some, be March. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then uh, we're playing uh, some, uh, you know, favorite festivals of ours. We're play, playing Q-Stock for the 4th oh, yeah. time Ooh. in uh, Olo. So that's going to be super fun. And we're also playing uh, Kuopio Rock. Mm. And uh, was there something else? Because oh, these, no, fest we're, we're these festivals were, were just announced, so... <laughs> yeah, 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 we're looking for something that we don't al already know. That might I, I think, you I think those yet. are the I think those are the two ones okay. that we announced so far, Ooh. so that's going to be super exciting also. Okay. As you guys no doubt noticed, we keep coming back to Finland, uh, you know, every summer. That's so great, so. that's so nice to have you here. But uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you pretty soon enough, and we keep looking forward to the new album and I wish you a great gig today and we'll be seeing you there too so uh, thank you so much and have a have a great album release yeah thank you so much always a pleasure to talk to you guys at KO Sign and uh, always nice to be back in Finland yeah. see you guys soon <laughs>